Hey guys, it's pen mail day and pretty much vintage pen mail day. Um, here is a package that I was expecting a week ago. The United States Postal Service was mighty slow getting packages from me to other people as well as to me that I had ordered, but I ordered these two pens from Tim's Vintage Pens. I've ordered from Tim before and uh, he's up in New York City and uh, he includes this little thing right here. Tim's Vintage Pens.com. If you want to go check out uh, his website and his selection, it's kind of neat on his uh, little tiny business card here, as well as a stationery, he includes that as a background, and that should look familiar uh, to anybody who uh, collects pens, especially vintage pens. My Parker Vacuumatic, uh, so he uses that as the, uh, the background for his business card, so I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, but I ordered two pens that really interested me that were at a fairly decent price, I thought. Uh, one of which was on my radar for quite some time, this one right here. It is a brand I've been kind of eyeballing and wanting to check out for a while, and I've actually tried to get some in the past that didn't work out so well. And here is a brand that I've got a lot of, and this is a Senator and a Waterman. The thing about this Waterman, it is a W3 from the 1940s, uh, made in England, and I actually have a W2 uh, that I've got right here uh, that I got from Steph over at Grand Mia Pens. He had restored this and did a video of it, and I purchased it from him directly uh, a couple of years ago. So I've had this one in my collection, a W2. I've never had a W3. So I went ahead and uh, made the purchase from Tim at Tim's Vintage Pens, and I wanted to be able to do a kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll show you some pictures here, and I'll uh, talk a little bit about the uh, similarities and only a slight variation, quite honestly, between the two pens here. So, um, also I printed out uh, the information from his website on these two pens, and you can actually go look, because they're still up there as of right this moment, uh, some descriptions, but I went ahead and printed them out a little bit. So let's look at the uh, Senator pen from the 1990s. Uh, Senator is um, properly known as Senator and then GmbH and Company. Not that I know what that means in German, but it's a major German producer of office items and ballpoint pens, particularly promotional pens, and a wide variety of quality. Its predecessor firm, Mertz & Krell, was actually very well known. Mertz & Krell was a producer of fountain pens in Germany since 1920, um, and they also were a major producer of parts for Mont Blanc, Pelican, and other brands from the 1930s forward. Senator-branded pens have been available since the 1950s, and uh, typically they are um, piston black-colored uh, piston fillers. And uh, that's what I have here in my hand, probably from uh, a plastic or some kind of a resin. Uh, this is probably from the 1990s because it does say on the clip, it says Senator and it does not say West Germany. It just says Germany and I'll try to get you some better close up pictures of that. So uh, after the reunification of Germany possibly. Um, and so the trim, it's kind of a gold plating clip engraved with Senator in tiny little letters that does say Germany. Um, and this pen actually has some flex to it. I've always liked the gold and black. To me, it's a very elegant. Always liked the gold and black, regardless of the pen. You know, different Mont Blanc and Pelican and Senator now and Waterman's. Gold and black to me is just classy. Simple yet elegant. It is a piston filler. It does have a blind cap that twists off the end. And uh, it does hide the piston knob. And that's something I had to look for when I first got it and started to open it up. Okay, so this cap actually does come off from this one. And you screw off the top. And you have actually a nice green ink window. And it was entirely green when I first got it. I went ahead and, and filled it up uh, with a black ink. I figured I might as well do both of these pens in the same ink. Uh, because I do use an awful lot of Waterman Black, uh, and that's what I put into it was that particular black ink. So you can see the ink sloshing around um, in that nice ink window, um, and uh, it does have a nice, decent nib on it. I will tell you that it's got a flexible nib, a lot more flex to it than I thought it was going to have. And this is a very wet, nice, uh, smooth writer. So I went ahead and uh, have gotten that. 
So let's go ahead, I'll set this aside, and look at the W3. The W3, uh, obviously, after the W2. Um, and here we go. Here's the comparison. The W2 is in the plum color, and the W3, the newer, well, I say new to me pen, and probably newer, actually, um, chronologically, uh, pen. So, the Waterman's W3, 1940s. In England, the W series of 2s, 3s, and 5s were very good. Uh, the pen is a W3. It's a mid-range pen, thick black celluloid. Uh, the trim is gold-plated and intact on this particular pen. Um, there were a lot of cost reductions during the 1940s. you got to figure, uh, not only were they struggling because of competition from other manufacturers, you also had, what, World War II that was going on at the time, and they were just trying to survive. So this does put down a, a fairly nice, uh, fine to medium um, line. And uh, this particular pen, I actually had to do a little tine alignment on it. So it's better than it was when I first got it. It actually wrote fairly well, but I said, you know, this is just a tiny bit of scratch. Let me see if I can do better. So I worked on the tine alignment a little bit, and I just spent just a little bit of time with a little bit of micro mesh to try to smooth it out even better. Now, one of the big differences you can see between the two is essentially the design on the cap. You look at the clip, it's essentially the same clip on both of them. Uh, very similar, they say the same, you know, Waterman's, um, and, but you've got that different style for a, a trim on that cap. Uh, here it says Waterman's W2, and keep in mind uh, that probably was chalked out uh, by Steph who restored it. This particular one, the imprint's a lot more faded. It is present. I'll get you a better picture of that, uh, but it is a little more worn. The other thing is they've got a very similar, uh, actually identical lever. And one of the things about this particular lever, it's a lot looser than this one. This one snaps in nice and tight. This one's a little loose. So I did take uh, a picture of the, the nibs and to show you a little bit of difference in the nibs. Uh, this is the W2 and this is my W3 that just arrived. And you can see just a little bit of difference in how they, obviously the section is identical. Uh, it is the black, even on the plum, it's still got the black section. The screws are essentially the, the same, the screw grooves. And then you've got the two nibs. Now I'll try to get you a better closer up picture of the nibs. All right, so keep in mind, this is just a pen mail video. It's not a full review. Um, and I do have a W2 video that's out there on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. Feel free to go look into it if you want. Uh, it does fit nicely into the hand. I do like pens from the 1940s. So when you go ahead and you post that, it actually fits nicely. It can also fit okay in the hand this way. I gotta be honest, I think I like it posted even better. Uh, one of the other things about uh, the W2 and W3, it, uh, they are featured in this particular book, Waterman Past and Present, the first six decades uh, by Max Davis and Gary Lehrer. And you open it up and then you've got like the W2 up here, which is almost identical to the one that I've got here, nice plum. Then I got a W3 showing here and you can tell that's more of a wood grain pattern um, in the uh, celluloid than uh, what I've got here. Mine is just plain black. Quite honestly, I kind of like the plain black better than I like the picture that they've got of their W3. So anyway, let's go ahead and do a writing sample of these both real quick uh, because, I mean, for you know, 80 bucks, you can find them uh, from time to time. I think the W2, I paid more for it uh, because it was uh, done by you know somebody overseas and shipped to me from England. Um, but let's go ahead and try on this Rhodia dot pad. So here, and I do know it's got a little bit of a hard start on this every time I've picked it up. So I've got a little bit of nib work maybe to do on this. A Waterman's W3. 
three, and I can still feel just a hair more scratch. So I still, like I said, I got some more nib work to do on this to make it where I really, really like it. Um, you know, it, it's been okay so far. I've used it to sign, you know, uh, let's see, a deposit ticket to go into the bank today. I just got this pen this morning in today's mail. Um, and uh, also to, uh, you know, sign the back of a check, to write out my checkbook. Uh, so I haven't been using it a tremendous amount, um, but I've done a lot of testing on notepads. And it's still got a little bit of scratch to it, so I may have a little bit more work to do. And, uh, you know, a lot of this, there is a sweet spot at an angle. I usually hold mine just a slightly higher angle because of my big hand. Um, but I found if I can put it down at a slightly lower angle, it actually is a lot better on this particular nib. So, um, you can get a nice, smooth, wet line on this with that Waterman's uh, black ink that's in it. So, like I said, up here, it's just a hair scratchy. Uh, when I did this up here. Right here, however, once you get it started and that ink really gets flowing after that slight hard start, but like I said, I've run across that several times today, um, it flows very, very nicely. But, you know, a little bit more nib work in store for me, I am sure. But overall, from the 1940s, I rather like it. I'm a Waterman's fan anyway. All right, now let's take a look at the Senator pen, this nice piston filler from the 1990s. Like I said, this is a uh, brand that I've been wanting to have for a while. You can go ahead and you can post it if you like. It uh, doesn't really backweight it because that cap is lightweight enough where it doesn't really bother it uh, so much on the balance. But quite honestly, you can also do well without it as well. So just for grins, just because I can, I'm going to set this cap down and we'll write without that cap on, on the tail end. So this is a Senator. It is a German pen. Post-1990 approximate um, you know, uh, I was I was living through the era when the Berlin Wall fell and the reunification of Germany. I don't remember exactly what date it was off the top of my head, though I should shame on me. <laughs> but I will tell you, this pen actually, every time I picked it up and played with it today, it's done great. You know, I've heard some great success stories from other people who like Senators. Um, I do enjoy this pen thus far. It's got a fine line to it bordering on medium and look at that. This has got a good amount of flex to it and it surprised me when I first picked it up and started to write with it exactly how much flex was in this particular pen. Kind of reminds me of some of those old Waterman nibs. So, you know, this was one of those little sleeper pens. I didn't quite expect that kind of uh, that kind of response out of it. And it's a good, wet writer. So, um, I was actually happy uh, about my first uh, ownership of a Senator-branded fountain pen. Um, piston fillers, I always like piston fillers. Lever fillers, I like those too because, well, first of all, I hate it to clean them. <laughs> they're horrible to clean. Uh, they're easy to fill, but they're also easy to restore and bring back to life. Uh, so I've been doing that quite a bit as well. So here you go, my pen mail for today. Uh, a nice Waterman W3 to go along with my W2 and a Senator German fountain pen. I rather enjoy them both thus far. I'll do a little bit more nib work on this to get it to where I think it's perfect. Uh, and this, I really don't think really needs any nib work, quite honestly. Uh, I'm happy with both. So there you are. Thanks for watching, guys. That's pen mail for today, and maybe I'll eventually do a full-on video on the Senator.